So there's a little issue with the last assistant that we made. He just listens and listens and listens. So we're going to fix that in this one. In the last video, we made a very basic functioning assistant. You can tell it to do something, and he has a response that he speaks back. Very simple, very basic. There's a few things we're going to add in this one to make it a little better, a little more useful. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to take this main function right here. We're going to straighten this up. We're going to make this a little more, a little easier to manage. First thing is we're going to create a new function. We're going to call it conversation flow. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire string here, this entire grouping, and we're going to put it up here. While well, true, this is all this is going to do, add more things into this function. You have our independent functions for the other ones. Down here in main, you just call you just call that conversation flow function. It runs the program, takes the command, does everything that way. You opened up over here. So now we have a functioning assistant. He works the same way. If I say stop. Stopping, sir. Now there's one issue with that is while it's listening, I can talk about anything I want to and it will continue to listen until I either stop talking. Stopping, sir. And then it picks up the one word that it wants to do. Or if you happen to push it while you are talking about something else, let's say I am giving out my bank account number to a friend for because I'm an idiot and would never do that. Let's say I'm having a phone conversation with somebody and I decide to talk about my plans for the weekend and how I really want to go buy this thing, but I don't think I have the money for it, but I think I'm going to try and figure out how I can get it cheaper. Right now the computer is listening to everything we say. So when you run that program, Jarvis is listening to everything that you say. And he's going to send all that to Google to translate into from audio files to text. And then he's going to try and figure out what to do with that. There are times that you don't want him to listen. So we're going to have a way of telling him when to start listening that doesn't require us pushing a, a key or typing in manually. So for that, we want to add a wake word or a hot word. This is usually a multi-syllable word or two words that the computer listens for as a trigger. Wake words can be on device, which means that any audio files created are stored locally. A wake word is the same thing that you see for Siri or for Google, the whole OK Google thing, the Hey Siri thing, Alexa, those are wake words. To do this, we're going to use things called Pico Voices PV Porcupine. It's an on device wake word. We're going to use an older version. Then you're also going to use a Python standard library function called struct. This is to assist with handling large packets of data, like the sound files that it's going to be doing on your computer. So let's get into it. PV Porcupine. It's a part of a program for Pico Voice that you can utilize and it does on device wake word detection. There are specific words that it only works on on Windows. Fortunately, there's a few that we can use. So one of them is Jarvis. Another one is computer. You also have Blueberries, Hey Siri, OK Google, Alexa. Those are available also. For our instance, we're gonna use Jarvis and we're gonna use computer. So for this, we have had to import a few other things. 
we imported PV Porcupine. For this particular model, I've used an older one. It is version 1.9.5. This is what you would type into pip to install this particular version. The reason why I'm using this one is it, it doesn't require you to make any type of account in their services. You don't need any credentials for this. It's not the newest one. If you want to mess with the newest one, you can. For our use case, we're using the older one. To make Porcupine work, you need to import struct. Struct is already in the Python library. Basically what it does is it just helps Python deal with large data files like an audio file. One other thing I added in here is I added a global variable called sir. You can change it to whatever you want, the great one. This is also an example of some variables you can use throughout the program. We're gonna call this everywhere. So to make a wake word, we're gonna add some new code down into the main. First thing is for PVC porcupine to work, we're gonna have three variables we're gonna create. They're gonna be, right now they're gonna be empty. So we're gonna initialize three empty variables that we're gonna use later. The reason we do this first is to make sure that they're there and that there is nothing in there from a previous recording. So you don't want him to get stuck in the loop. He hears his name or hears the wake word and just keeps getting triggered over and over again. Defeats the purpose. So we initialize porcupine. That's empty, that's none. PA for short for pi audio, this is none. Audio stream, this is also none. Print some opening statements here just to make it a little more interesting, more fun. He's gonna say online and ready to say that he's ready. A little divider. Then he's gonna say drivers awaiting your call. And he's gonna say that user variable, whether this is sir, great one, it could be your name, so it could be James, whatever you want it to say. First, he's gonna try. We're gonna create a porcupine variable that has those keywords that we already picked out. So in this instance, it's gonna be drivers and computer. We're gonna call pi audio. That's gonna be our audio source. Audio stream, this is all Pi Audio code just for what we need to make an open stream from your microphone. We're gonna have a while loop. So while this is true, he's gonna to listen to the stream. He's gonna use that struct module that we import to unpack and modify the stream and analyze it. We're gonna create a keyword index. This is a integer number that represents the sounds and that's all it detects it's just determining a variable for those sounds so hey zero jarvis does not equal zero that registers as something close so it's gonna move on to the next one hot word detected it's gonna run that conversation flow that conversation flow function that we have up here so this is where all the responses triggers can be and then once it gets done with that function, it's gonna sleep for a second, and then it's gonna end the loop by saying that exact same phrase that it said before, so you know that it's listening on the screen. Finally, at the very end, right before the program closes, it's gonna delete everything from those variables so that you don't have any residual data around, you don't have anything left over. So we're gonna test this real quick. He's sitting there listening. All he's listening for are those wake words. I could talk about the weather. I could talk about do a phone call. I could do whatever I want to do. He's not going to actually register or send anything to Google until I say one of those two wake words. So if I say, hey, Jarvis, now he's listening and I say, hello. Hello. He's listening again. So now I could say goodbye. Goodbye. Now if I say stop listening or stop. Stopping, sir. He's back to that awaiting your call statement, which means that he is not listening. We can continue talking about whatever we want, but let's take him one step further. So you notice that you can't really tell when he is listening unless you look at the screen. So we're gonna use something that is already installed into Python through through Windows. Give us an audio cue. So move you out of the way. 
So up at the top, we're going to import a set of functions called wind sound. It has some very basic tones and sounds that you can get out of Windows. We're going to use this to create a kind of alert tone. So we just got to decide where we're going to put it. Uh, let's put it up here. Looks good. And let's call it like a ready chirp. Why not? It's going to be more of a chirp sound once we're done with it. So ready chirp. And all you got to do wind sound dot beep and you give it two numbers this is their pitch and the tone length so we can do something like 500 and let's say 100 we're gonna bring in a new shell so let's just play with some town import wind sound dot beep so if we do that 500 frequency and the duration of 100 let's copy that real quick before we do it so we and that's the sound it makes We like that tone, we go a little longer. So let's try a 600 and a... This is kind of currently what I use. Just enough to get your attention, not annoy you too much, is the idea. We'll do 600 and 300. So we got a sound. Now we got to figure out where we're going to put it. I like to do it where you're taking that command. So right before you know he's going to listen. So I would say, I'll say ready chirp. Before he listens and then after we know he's listening so he's gonna chirp give that's your cue to to talk let's see he, once he's done listening he chirps again you can actually have this be some spaces on here and trip two so now he should we gotta run this he's awaiting our call we could talk about anything we want give our crypto address to somebody we can do bank accounts we could do secrets of the universe and then we say jarvis hello hello goodbye goodbye is this video good you should like and subscribe Hey, stop listening, or just stop. Stopping, sir. You can even... He's still running, so you can actually close everything. He's still running in the background right now. 
and we can just say Jarvis. Hello there. Hello. Open my email. This is where I would run a program to open your email. How are you? Doing well. Alright, exit. Ending program. So you now have your own virtual assistant that you can use in the background. I'm going to end this video here. The next one, we are going to start talking about him opening some programs, accessing some websites. If anyone has any comments, questions, concerns, let me know. If you're really interested in this, I would suggest you hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell at the end. That way it tells you when I update the next one. But until next time, have a good day.